everybody, it's Trish from the MTech team, and I am here how to show you how to make a simple virtual tour in virtual reality. So you're going to be able to use a spherical camera, such as this Ricoh Theta, and you're going to be able to take visitors on a tour of your school, where they're going to be able to hear your voice, music, images, video, whatever you want to do to showcase your school. And so the first step we're going to do is we're going to be using this camera. Now this camera you can use standalone, which means I can take this camera and I can just press the button and it will simply take the photo. And so I can hold it up, I can put it on a tripod. Another thing that I can do is I can connect it to a mobile device, such as my iPad or a phone. And in that way, you can treat the camera like a remote. So what you're going to do is you're going to have to connect the camera to the Wi-Fi on your uh, mobile device and then you'll be able to use that as a remote. Then we'll be taking the images off. Let me show you how. When you have your mobile device, what you're going to look for is go to your settings. You're going to make sure that your camera is turned on and you're going to be looking for it to pull up on your screen so that you can select it as its own network. Once you've made the connection, you're going to go ahead and look for that Rico Theta app and then you'll be able to use that as the remote for your camera to take the images. Now, in this particular case, because I am filming, as well as uh, showcasing my iPad, that's why you won't see the connection, but you will see it connected and be able to use that. Okay, so now I've done my filming with the spherical camera, as well as I've just used my traditional camera, whether that's a cell phone or a camera, and I've taken some still pictures. Because inside the spherical, uh, image, we can post individual pictures. And these are hotspots. It allows us to be able to provide more details of the space. Now what I need to do is I need to take all of those images off of the camera and put them in my OneDrive. And so I've got my camera plugged in. I've got the data transfer cord right here. And I'm going to be showing you how we can just drag these on over into a folder in our OneDrive so we can use them. So you're going to need to make sure that you've plugged in the camera with a data transfer cable. Not any cable will work for this. Make sure you use the one that comes with the camera. What I'm going to see is I'm going to see the Ricoh Theta just in my C drive, just right there. It'll treat it just like a USB drive. And when I double click into it, I'm going to be able to see all the way through, just drill down, here's the images that I've taken. What I've done is I've gone ahead and I've made a folder in my OneDrive and I called it my 360 virtual tour. So I'm simply going to select all of my images and I'm just going to drag them into that folder so that now they'll be there. Before you delete them off of the camera, just make sure you open up the folder that you've saved them in and yep, they're sitting right there ready to use. Now in order to put this all together, we're gonna to be using an awesome service called ThingLink. ThingLink is a way for us to make interactive images, audio, and video, and they also have a 360 degree editor. Now, in order to use the 360 editor, you are going to have to have the upgraded account, but there's a great educational discount in order for you to have that. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go on over to ThingLink and get logged in. So now that I'm here, you can see that this is the ThingLink. You can go ahead and check out the classroom learning pricing for this. But I'm going to go and I'm going to log in just with my account. Now, there's always upgrades happening. Just so you know, if you want to choose to use ThingLink moving forward for amazing demonstration of learning, virtual field trips, and other classroom projects, there's a lot of built-in features, uh, and including an image library if you don't have your own spherical camera to be able to make these expeditions. So, now that I'm in here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to be putting my content in here in order to create my virtual tour. And so you can see on the side, on the left hand side, I can go ahead and I can upload some things into my content. So once I do that, I'm going to go ahead and I want to hit that lovely little plus button. I'm going to create a folder for my virtual tour. And then I'm going to be able to add content to that. So go ahead, hit that create button, make sure that you are choosing that location where you saved all of your different images, your spherical images and other content. You can see I've got everything here. I'm just going to go ahead and select everything I haven't uploaded and get that onto the 
So now I'm going to go ahead and do a very basic example, just showing you how to start a scene. Let's go ahead and select what's going to be the first thing that people are going to see in your virtual tour. So here I've chosen the outside of St. Peter's. This is Learning Services, where I get to work every day. You can see that I can click and drag around and I can see everything. I can even see that I chose to hold the camera instead of use the remote. So everything is going to be here. What I can do is I can do a little bit of editing. So I'm going to go ahead and edit. Now I can do some things like add a tag. A tag is that hotspot that you want to show up in your tour. What I can add is fantastic. I can go ahead and add text and media. I can add a label. I can add content from a website. I'm going to go ahead and add some text and media. Right now, I'm going to give it a title, a description, and I'm going to add my image or video. Just remember, if you have a button URL, that means it's going to link people to something outside of this thing. So if perhaps you wanted them to be able to click and go to a website, or do you want them to click and go to another 360 image, which I'll show you. For now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add an image or a video. And it's great that you can add both. I'm just going to go into that drive and choose my still image that I had. I'm going to link it to this. And it's starting to come together. Another option I have is to be able to upload audio. Audio is a fantastic way to add some description over top of your virtual tour. I need to record the audio and save it. And so what I'm actually going to be using is a service called Online Voice Recorder. It's so fantastic because it's free, it's easy, and it works on any device. So you're going to go to onlinevoicerecorder.com and you're going to click and record your audio and save it to that same folder in OneDrive. And so right now, because I'm uh, filming, I'm going to have to hit allow. Welcome to Learning Services. This is where consultants come together in order to support teachers and students. Once I have my sound recording, I can say save, and I'm going to put it in that exact same location. Now I'm ready to go ahead and upload my audio. I'm going to select the one that I just recorded. And now it will be attached. Welcome to Learning Services. This is where consultants come together in order to support really teachers and students. The icon of the hotspot. I can choose any of these ones that are built right into here, or of course, I can upload my own picture. So if I wanted to be able to have something that was important to me, like I took an image of something, I could technically use that image and it will become the hotspot. Now I've taken a really big picture, but you can go ahead and you can choose. Uh, this is going to be an image. Maybe I'm going to make it stand out just a little bright. Now you've got that icon. I'm going to say done and done. Now, this is live. I can see I have this lovely little virtual tour, and it's going to invite people to click on that hotspot. Welcome to Learning Services. Now, there's some other things that you should note that are really important. I'm going to go ahead and edit this again, and I'm going to look into my settings. Just remember that there's some things that you can go ahead and you can change, like your color scheme, if you really wanted to have a really specific color scheme to make it stand out. I can also choose if I don't want that animation. It is nice, it invites people to click on it. Um, do I want audio uploaded? All of those different pieces. So you can check that out. Another setting you may wanna look at is just being able to rename it because this is what people will see. And it does typically name it the file that you uploaded. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it my virtual tour name. Now, the last thing I want to show you is how do we connect one scene to another scene? So I can move from one spherical image to another spherical image. And we just do that by inserting a link. And so I'm going to go back to that main folder and open up the spherical image of my next scene, get that address, and link it to the first one. So you can see here, I'm back in my folder. There's my virtual um, tour folder. And now I want to go ahead and I want to look at my next image. So perhaps I want to take people into um, a hallway or the entrance of learning services. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that spherical image. 
and I'm going to do the exact same process. I'm going to take a moment to just be able to add my description, change my title, and then we're going to link it. So I went through the exact same process I did in the first part of this. I went ahead and I edited the title of the image. I added a hotspot here. This is the room that I work in and I want everybody to come and visit the electric playground. So I added a link to that. And so now what's going to happen is I want to be able to have people go from one scene to this scene. At the very top, there is an address. I'm going to copy that address. Now what's going to happen is I'm going to go back to my original image where I created outside of learning services. And as I want to be able to take people inside, I'm going to go ahead and add a tag. So now I'm going to hit my plus button. I'm going to add my text and media. And I'm going to paste the link to that other scene right here, as well as give it a title and description. So you can see here, I was able to put a title, a description, I have the URL to the next scene, and I could even change what the text of the button says. If I wanted to go ahead and add an image to go with this or some audio, I can. And don't forget, I can change the icon. I really like to indicate to people if they're going to be moving scenes with an arrow. So I'll go grab an arrow so that really stands out. Now, of course, I can put that button wherever I want. I can drag these hotspots so people can look inside. I'm going to say done. Now what you're going to see is when I click that button, it opens it up and it will take me to that next scene. So now I'm going to be inside of here. I can look around and see everything and continue on with my tour. Now, when you are ready to share this with others, there's some really great features to note. When you say share, you're being able to get some options here of how you want to be able to embed the media and um, do you want only your organization. Now, because of these are going to be for parents, you're going to want to be able to change the visibility in your settings. You can choose between public, which means that anybody can find it and search for it, or you can choose unlisted, which means you have to be given the link to have access. Please keep in mind to not include any private student information in any of these virtual tours. Make sure that you don't have any identifiable student images or things like that that are not covered under our FOIA. Now that I'm going to say save, what's really fantastic is it gives me embed code so I can put this directly on my website or my SharePoint. I can share a link straight to this tour. And of course, if I wanted to publish it to social media, I could do that as well. There's some really fantastic examples that have been created. You can see here that this is an example from ThingLink showing a tour inside of a special education classroom, including all of the different services that are offered to children. You can see a school tour here that was created for Christ the King School when it first opened to be able to go around and meet all of the teachers as well as see all of the different learning spaces. And you can see a fantastic example that was created for the WIND program at Austin O'Brien. The sky is the limit and people will have a great opportunity to still be able to have that virtual tour even if they can't go inside of your buildings. Anybody seeing this virtual tour can view it on their phone and if you want to put it in a, a virtual reality camera like Google Cardboard or anything like that, you'd be able to look around and see it. But of course it works directly in that single view on a computer or a phone as well. Good luck with all of your virtual tours and if you need any help, just reach out to me on the MCAC team. Bye everybody.